uh, you know, more exposure to things. We travel. I learned all that from them. Camping, traveling to places to see things. And so I was able to give my children that. But I wasn't able to give them the physical resources that they had because even though they were females like me, their husbands were business owners. So I became envious of that because I knew that we had we had the same skills, we had the same smarts. We just didn't have the same opportunities and exposure. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can call it envy or, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I call that envy. But it was a desire for, for, for my children to have better. Looking at them, that created a desire in me for my children to have better. I say it like that. Um, some people think it was hatred that started segregation, but why do you think segregation started? I think segregation started because you ever read that book, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry? Well, they use, normally give it to fourth graders. And they get, if you like to read, get it. Uh, in the movie, I mean, in the book, they actually made a movie too. But in the book, they talk. the little girl talks about how the school she went in, the books were 10 and 15 years old because they were the hand-me-down books from the white schools. And that's what we had too in our little schools. We had hand-me-downs. Again, it's resources. So those kids had the better opportunities because they had the better resources. We didn't. We had, you know, we, we would have charity people like the uh, uh, Catholic nuns would come into our neighborhoods and show us movies and bring little pamphlets and all that kind of stuff. But uh, just the idea of them, they just had more. That's basically it. <laughs> so you think resources is what really kept is what brought about the segregation? Uh, Them always being able to have the upper hand? Right. Like when they were marching, Martin Luther King was marching so that he wanted our children to get into those schools because those schools had the resources that our kids need. You got somebody like Marcus Garvey who said, well, just give us our own spot of land. Let us build our own economics. We'll buy our own resources and all that. But we weren't ready for that because you got to think, and I tell my children this, that um, those slaves were brought here with no resources. Your ancestors were brought here with no resources. They didn't have clothes on their back for the most part. So... They came in to a place that was already set up with resources and had been, you got the Europeans who, they were new to America, but they already had established cities and resources and over there overseas before they ever came here. So when they came, they came with books and, uh, you know, even the poor ones came with the ability to, and the knowledge to get what they need. But I was came... Um, when our people came, they came with nothing, and when they got here, were not allowed to gain anything. They couldn't learn to read, they couldn't learn the ABCs. There were so many things that they could not do. That was forced. They didn't, they didn't, um, uh, they didn't, uh, they didn't not want to know. That was forced on them that they couldn't know. So when Martin Luther King and those people came along and started preaching about segregate, uh, desegregation, it wasn't cause so much that they wanted to be with the white kids. They just wanted to be able to go in there and you got me over here and now you give me the opportunity to stand up and make, like you say, I am a man. So I guess to sum it up, you would just basically say that they, they, they wanted segregation on the kind of the resources and the exposure. Do you believe that things would be different if we had the exposure to those resources? Sure. We're being exposed now. We, 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 we've come to a point where, I mean, we ain't where we ought to be, but we're at a point now where we have the opportunity to be exposed. And if it's government force, because if the government never wrote those laws that said that you had to allow us in these schools and whatever, then... 
never would have been exposed and never would have gotten the opportunities. Like I just saw LeBar on YouTube that got the 20. Um, he got accepted to all 20 Ivy League colleges that he applied to. Them white schools. Them white schools. Now, you could say, well, he should go to Howard. And I'm not, I, I would love to, every black child needs to experience a black college. But he, when he go to Harvard, when he walks out of that school, he's already lined up to be in the top jobs in the country. Because that's how they grapevine. That's how they do their thing. So they they, they got kind of like, so, like I said, he, he becomes part of that. Even though he black, he still becomes part of that. When he their says culture, Harvard, their system. right, he becomes part of their system. Well, that's all I have. Thank you so I much. I enjoy running my mouth a little bit.